this is stuff you like, you can call me Ursa, and Thor is capable of learning. Who knew? Thor is that guy. You know the one. A jock. Tall and handsome and good at sports. I mean, fighting, and in this case, so likeable that you can't really hate him too hard. Though sometimes you want to, because he can be kind of an arrogant tool. And that, of course, is the point of the Thor movie. It's to get him to the stage where he's ready to be a team player. He starts as a boy, he winds up as a man. Classic hero's journey stuff. And Thor was the boy who would be a man who would be the king. And yet in the Avengers he's taking orders from Steve without question, because he has learned about cooperation and he has learned about teamwork and he has learned how to follow as well as how to lead. Something that his brother has thus far missed out on, but we'll come back to that some other day. I mean to rule them. That's why should I not? You think yourself above them. Oh, yes. Then you miss the truth of ruling, brother. The throne would suit you ill. The plot of Thor goes like this. Jane Foster is an astrophysicist looking for an aurora. Instead, her assistant runs over a strange blood and guy. Thor, Prince of Asgard, but we'll come back to that. The Frost Giants are the sort of bad guys who were beaten by the Asgardians and had their glowing cube thing taken away from them for their trouble. Loki is actually a frost giant adopted baby, which leads to quite a lot of his crazy because, you know, internalized hatred of your own race will do that to you. Anyway, Thor's a douche who would be king. Loki both idolizes and hates his brother because, you know, Thor, kind of an arrogant sod. Ooh, look at me, I have a big red cape and shiny hair and a face that modeling agencies would walk over broken glass to sign. Mm. Loki doesn't want Thor to be king, so he lets the frost giants in to mess up his coronation. Odin is all, Actually, yeah, you're really not ready to be king. So while well, Loki was right, don't get too hopeful because his next actions... If it's any consolation, I think you're right. About the Frost Giants, about Laufey, about everything. If they found a way to penetrate Asgard's defenses once, who's to say they won't try again? Next time with an army. Exactly. There's nothing you can do without defying father. No, 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 no. Yeah, he goads Thor into going to Jotunheim. They fight frost giants. Thor is an idiot. You are a vain, greedy, cruel boy! And you are an old man and a fool! And he gets banished and mortalized for his trouble. Whosoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. So yes, he's banished to Earth where he's run over by Darcy, latches onto Jane like a baby chick, and gets tased by Darcy in short order. You dare threaten me, Thor, with so puny a weapon! What? He was freaking me out! And on Asgard, Loki finds out that he's an adopted frost giant. Yeah. Meanwhile, S.H.I.E.L.D. is all, ooh, exciting, now give us all your stuff. Jainzel, he came through the Einstein Rosen Bridge, and they try to break into Shield's place to get Jane's stuff and Thor's hammer back. And then there's Hawkeye and Coulson and mud wrestling and general good things. And then Thor tries to pick up the hammer and Nope. Sorry, fake out. He's not worthy of it yet. So Thor gets captured, Loki comes to see him, Loki lies to his face and kicks him while he's down and tells him all of the worst possible things that he could hope to hear. Let me explain to Father. Father is dead. Best thing he could have done for him, actually, though I don't think that was the intention. Welcome to the belly of the whale. No way to go but up. Oh. I am sorry. Thank you for coming here. Then it's time to stage a jailbreak with the complicity of Coulson because Coulson is nothing if not a smart man and sometimes being clever involves giving people just enough rope. Thor learns to be a good guy and teaches Jane about astrophysics and magic and the branches of the world's tree. Thor's friends show up. Loki sends a giant fire-breathing dude to kill Thor. Thor chooses self-sacrifice and is therefore worthy. Sparkle, sparkle transformation sequence! And the world is saved. Then we go back to Asgard, where Loki is kind of running this really complicated plan to do with the old father and Heimdall and various other things that I haven't really had time to go into. And the Rainbow Bridge is destroyed in order to save the Frost Giants. What are you doing? Destroy the bridge or let us be again! Thor has learned to make the sacrifice play, and he has learned that even though people are very tall and blue, that doesn't mean they're not people, and that you shouldn't try and save them. 
Forgive me, Jane. Oh, kid, I'm sorry. And now Thor can't go back and see Jane, but she's still looking for him. The end. Oh, but possibly Loki has taken over the mind of Eric Selvig. The end. In the Avengers, Thor returns at great cost from Asgard to stop his not-dead-after-all brother from, you know, conquering the world and all that. With the Bifrost gone, how much dark energy did the old father have to muster to conjure you here? Thor loves Loki. Truly, madly, deeply loves Loki. And this is the source of much of his personal conflict in the Avengers. He comes back from Asgard at great cost. He starts off fighting Iron Man and Captain America to take Loki back before he decides to team up with them. The Earth or his brother is his choice, and he spends most of the movie trying to have both. But as it turns out, you can't. Thor's other defining features, by the way, are being ridiculously photogenic. This is going on Facebook, smile. Being kind of archaic. And being the king of caps lock. This drink, I like it. I know, it's great, right? Another! <laughs> It is also my personal headcanon that in the Avengers universe, little girls especially love Thor because he's a prince and he's got shiny L'Oreal hair and he has a red swishy cape and a rainbow bridge and Asgard is just beautiful and look, look at that, it's so adorable! Sorry, I'm getting off topic. I thoroughly enjoyed Thor's movie. I like Iron Man and Captain America, though not so much Iron Man 2. It attempts to strike a balance between being funny and being dramatic. And while it does have some, you know, not bad dramatic moments nearer to the end, I remember Thor as being more funny than dramatic. And that's not just because of Thor, but because of the supporting characters as well, including Darcy Lewis. What? He was freaking me out! Darcy Lewis is an amazingly interesting character because of all the characters in Thor, she is the one who is the most easily relatable. But more on that some other time. Thor the movie is well worth a look and provides a pretty good setup for the Avengers and even includes a little bit of Coulson and an even littler bit of Hawkeye. Avengers Thor was conflicted but ultimately a good guy and ever optimistic that his brother could be turned from the dark side. I'm probably not as optimistic as Thor on that score, but we'll see. Anyway, next time Hawkeye and Coulson, well, they don't really have enough material to have a whole episode each, so they're just having a longer than usual episode to share. And then after Christmas, we're going to be talking Loki and a few miscellaneous others to wrap everything up. See you then.